Hello and welcome to another edition of Ed's Attention to Detail. Today we're going to talk about the North American Aviation A5 Vigilante. And in particular I'm going to talk about a 148 scale trumpeter RA5C Vigilante model that I built. But before I get into the model I want to talk about the history of the aircraft. Originally produced by North American Aviation, it was designed in 1953 as a carrier-capable nuclear strike bomber. It was privately funded by North American Aviation and only after the design had been put on paper did they take it to the U.S. Navy and give them a look at it and they actually approved it. They liked what they saw. The first flight was in 1958 on 31 August and that was the Y a3J1. That was the original prototype to the Vigilante. It was one of the largest, fastest, and most complex aircraft ever to be stationed on board the decks of an aircraft carrier. There were a total of 156 aircraft that were built, and this includes the first production run and a later production run, and it covers all the aircraft from the first two prototypes to the very last of the RA5C Vigilantes. Those are the reconnaissance versions, which I'll talk about here briefly. Some of the noteworthy characteristics about the Vigilante. It was supersonic, nuclear capable, bomber, carrier based. It had two crew members. It had a top speed of over Mach 2. It actually on one particular flight uh, flew at 2.5 Mach. And I, I don't know exactly how fast it is, but that's fast. It had two J79 GE-8 turbojet afterburning engines. By the way, these are the same engines that were used in the F4 and the B-58 Hustler. And it was one of the first aircraft that actually operated on a fly-by-wire flight control system. This aircraft was highly advanced for its time, and unfortunately that was one of the drawbacks to the Vigilante was it was just very complex. It was hard to maintain. Now the A5 Vigilante was originally produced as a nuclear capable bomber. It had a linear bomb bay. And what I mean by that is the bomb bay actually was up through the middle of the fuselage mounted between the engines and it would eject the payload out the back end of the aircraft. Now, great theory on paper, but it didn't work all that well in flight because whatever it was that was ejected out the back of the aircraft tend to kind of train along behind the airplane in the slipstream so it made uh, hitting the target pretty tough so as a bomber it really didn't work all that well but what they did need was a reconnaissance aircraft and north american aviation stepped up they modified the a5b into the ra5c they put a photo reconnaissance pod on the bottom of the aircraft, cameras, sensors, provisions for flashes that could be hung or strobes that could be hung underneath the wings for night photography. And this aircraft could fly at 51,000 feet. Now, most of the reconnaissance missions were done between seven and 8,000 feet, but they were done extremely fast. I mean this aircraft was in full afterburner and as, as a recon aircraft it didn't have any stores hanging off the wings. Uh, in fact most of the time it was escorted by F-4s and a lot of the stories that I've read the F-4 pilots would actually have to call the vigilante air crew and ask them to slow down so that they could keep up. Now I'm going to talk about the model that I built
The serial number or the Buno number for this model is 148925. Now I did a little bit of research about this particular aircraft. It was actually delivered to the United States Navy in 1961 and it had a very long career. It was retired and struck from the inventory in 1975 and unfortunately this aircraft was actually scrapped in October of 1978. So there's the history of this aircraft, 148925. This model was fun to build. It had a lot of really nice features to it. Flaps and slats could be positioned in either the up or down. You could do it with the wings folded or the wings spread. Canopies open and closed. Landing gear retracted or extended. Uh, a lot of different options. You could actually fold the tail on the airplane. Um, I built the, uh, the model in the ready to fly condition. So wing spread, tail spread, um, canopies closed, ready for flight. Okay, well, there you have it. And by the way, did I mention this thing is huge? This is a very big model for 148 scale. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. And remember, pay attention to the details. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and hit the notification button so you know when I'm doing a new video. Like this video and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Also, feel free to share this with any of your social media sites.